NCTV's yeah. political commentator Scott Reed joins us to talk more. But this is his budget day. Not a star and not on ice. I think you're no a star in our eyes. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no QR code to scam. We're just going to no. get straight to this, Scott. Uh, budget day, obviously yeah. a huge day. You worked in finance minister and prime minister Paul Martin's office for years. What is budget day like? And we know so much already about what's in today's budget. What do you make of this strategy? Well, at the political level, you know, today is a like Super Bowl, or at least it used to be. And what was interesting is that for many years, the Trudeau government really didn't package up and deliver their budgets with the same bang and, you know, snap, crackle and pop that we used to in the old days. This time they have. I mean, this rollout turning into budget days instead of budget day, mm -hmm. really with a huge emphasis in particular on housing. So that's been the run up. Today, we're going to get the actual budget. It'll have all the numbers. We'll find out how high the deficit is. We'll find out what else. But we're also going to see, I think, a an, an unleashed political strategy. Today is going to sound like a budget. It's going to look like a budget. It's actually a bear trap. What mm. they're really trying to do is they're trying to spring a trap on the Conservatives. You're going to get tax increases in this budget. But you're only going to get tax increases for the very wealthiest in the country. And the hope, the hope from the Liberals is, sure, they'll get lots of economic pushback. You'll hear from bank economists and stuff who will say, well, you know what, we're punishing those that create jobs or that make the investments and move investment around. But what the Liberals are hoping is they can draw Paul Evan and the Conservatives into a fight about whether or not we ought to be taxing the Galen Westons of the world. They think, politically, the Liberals, that's a fight they can win. So we're going to watch this. It is the economic blueprint of the government, no question. But really what this is, for the first time in a long time, they're using the budget to spring a political fight. They're trying to tempt Polyev into that hmm. boxing match. I think it's going to be interesting to watch. Do you see this as kind of a Hail Mary, considering where the polls are right now? To sort of Because I mean, the, the, the deficit is pretty far between the Liberals and people and conservatives right now. I spent a bit of time this past weekend in Ottawa, and they... Uh they push back on that predictably. So yeah, yeah. they said this isn't a this isn't a hail mary. This is a dink and dump. What they want to do, they know they're 20 points behind in the polls. Yeah. But they say we're going to use this budget to try to gain back five percent. They have an idea of who they're going after as a voter group. We'll get five percent pick that up off of the budget. Mm -hmm. Then in the fall, we're going to pick up another five percent as the economy improves. We get ourselves into within hailing distance of seven eight percent by the time of the next election. Then we can use a writ period to really mm -hmm. pound on Polyev, drive up his negatives. And then we'll win the election. That's the plan. So it's not a Hail Mary. They think they're going to march the field and win in the yeah. last second of regulation. It's a tall order, man. Well, it's that a is, tall yeah, order. That's incrementalism it at all, its finest. I it suppose. all starts yeah. today. From their perspective, it yeah. all starts today with the budget. Okay, so that starts today. But then yesterday, we got this really surprise announcement uh, of the federal government and provincial government agreeing uh, on sort of Highway 413, kind of get the blessing from the federal government. To a lot of people's surprise here, kind of reminds me of sort of the Ford government taking over yeah. some of the transport, like the, the, the DVP and Gardner here, and sort of trying to take the political football out of the other level of government. Again, I, I'm going to look at this from a pure political standpoint, because I think what's so interesting is whether the provincial government of Doug Ford is or is not interested in being in conflict with the federal government of Justin Trudeau. And, you know, it had been up until relatively recently, the only file they were really having a major league throwdown yeah. fight on was this 413, where the environment minister, Stephen Gabo, who conservatives loathe, and they, they put this guy's picture on the dartboard. Mm -hmm. He was the one guy that was looking for conflict with them, fighting them on the 413 and environmental approvals for that highway. He comes from an environmental activist background. All of his allies and former stakeholders were like, stop this highway. Mm -hmm. And now, all of a sudden, the Ford government's fighting on nearly every other front with the federal government, but now they've come to peace on these. I gotta tell you, Stephen Gibo at the federal level as an environment minister, he is gonna catch so much grief mm. from his followers for this decision. But obviously, Obviously, what the Trudeau Liberals have done, and particularly, I would say, caucus members in the GTA mm -hmm. have said, we have to win re-election. If we oppose this mm. highway in the GTA, in the ring around Toronto, you were condemning us to defeat. Yeah. So don't do it. So I would bet that the Liberal members of Parliament in and around the 905 had a lot to do with this approval. But the influence there. Do you think Gibo quickly stays or goes? I think, I, I think Yubo will stick around, yeah. but boy, oh boy, uh, he's, he's in for some humbling because mm -hmm. all of the files that he carries about most of all, I think you're starting to see them get pushed into the shadows because mm -hmm. the government knows that they are not winning votes on that front. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's talk at the municipal level. And, you yeah. know, last week we talked a lot about the vacant property tax mass. We saw these huge lineups of different civic centers as people couldn't get their phones and calls answered when they're like, oh my gosh, I've got this $30,000, $20,000, $15,000 property tax bill suddenly here. This was a complete 
complete mess here. Yeah. Uh, how do you think it's being handled now as they try to sort of fix this you know, problem? Well, we don't know. Council is going to actually try to tackle this thing. What we do know is this. They have said, the mayor has said, this thing can't proceed. And now the pushback is, you know what, just abandon it altogether. This thing is such a canard, it will not fly, let's forget it. And she is now taking, I think, a little measure of political risk by saying, no, 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 we're not going to abandon it. We're going to improve it. We're going to yeah. fix it. We're going to get it working right. But what does that look like? How do you make it work right? Mm -hmm. How can you guarantee that it won't be a debacle next time you launch whatever is revised? I think it's really interesting. I don't want to pretend that this thing's a crisis. It was a debacle unto yeah. itself. But for the mayor, for Mayor Chow, this has really been the first stretch of Rocky Highway she's had to travel. Yeah. And now she kind of does own it a bit by rejecting the calls to just scrap it. She's going to own whatever emerges. Yeah. And she's going to have to make darn sure it works, because if it doesn't, then it'll be on her plate. Yeah, she's definitely want to make sure that that is fixed, because, yeah, that was quite the mess, uh, quite the, I mean, just chaos for so you many You do people. not yeah. want seniors mm -hmm. who are living on a fixed yes. income, who are sensitive to $200 charge, lining up at City Hall mm -hmm. with their pay stubs, looking at the cameras of CP24 saying, mm -hmm. I can't bear this burden. Yeah. That is bad politics that with a capital B. That was the stuff that B. stuck out to me, indeed. Scott Reed, always appreciate this. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Have Thank a great you, day.